All right, today's lesson is going to be mostly fun, although we will add to our knowledge of movable chord shapes while having some fun. We're going to be looking at some really easy classic George Thorogood licks. Uh, I won't call it George Thorogood for dummies, but I, I will say it's George Thorogood for non-slide players. Uh, yes, I realize George Thorogood is a slide player. I realize he played these licks on slide. Please don't send me emails saying, you know, George Thorogood was a slide. I know George Thorogood is a slide player, okay? Would we want to discriminate against non-slide players and say you cannot play George Thorogood licks? I don't think so. Because let's face it, sometimes you might have your Esquire out, you might have it in the cocked wah position, you might have a little crunch box going and you just got to go sometimes you just got to do that all right and if you're not a slide player you shouldn't be prevented from being able to do that so today I'm going to show you some pretty easy uh, classic licks from his two most classic songs in my humble opinion bad to the bone and who do you love let's look at who do you love first and this is the Bo Diddley beat, right? Obviously, this is a cover that George did. So I misspoke a minute ago saying it was his song. Of course, it's not his song. Uh, but it's a great cover that he does of this classic song with the Bo Diddley beat. And the Bo Diddley beat is... chord, an E major chord at the open position, could not be simpler other than getting the beat down, right? And then the only other chord uh, here in that uh, verse is after he says, who do you love? He goes back and forth between an E and an A chord like so. <laughs> Now, the slide parts, he goes, he uses a movable A shape because, of course, that's what a lot of slide is, is playing on that movable A shape because even in standard tuning, those three notes, or excuse me, those three strings form a major chord. They form, when open, a G chord, when fretted, an A chord, a C chord, a D chord, an E chord. And since Who Do You Love is in E, you can take a guess at where he's going to go when he goes to play a little slide break. He's going to go to the E version of that movable A chord, it is at the ninth fret, right? Because if you played it as a full chord, so back and forth between an E chord, A version of the E chord at the 9th fret, A shape of the D chord at the 7th fret. And then, you're just kind of muting the strings and sliding up. Playing around with it. This is rough. We're just fooling around. We're just having fun. 
If you want to just, you know, sometimes you got to rock, right? You've just got to rock, you turn it up, you put on your crunch box, you put on your bridge pickup, whatever guitar you like to rock with, and you want to just play along with some George Thorogood, you're not a slide player, you can play it anyway, all right? All right, next, let's look at Bad to the Bone. For Bad to the Bone, I'm tuning down to open G. You do not have to do this, but a lot of slide guitar is in open G, and to get down to open G, you just want to tune your first and sixth strings from E down to D, so they're the same as the fourth string. And you want to tune your fifth string down to G, so it's the same as the third string. So basically you're making your 6-5 the same as your 4-3. That's it. As you could see when I played the little lick, the signature lick, at the beginning of the lesson, I hadn't tuned down yet at that point, and you noticed it sounded fine. The reason is most of the licks are played on the 4, 3, and 2 string. Again, you don't need to tune down for that. That is an open G in standard tuning. There's only one lick that I'm going to show you anyway in Bad to the Bone that's a signature lick that does require this, the tuning down, and I'll get to that one in a second. I'm going to attempt to show you the majority of the Bad to the Bone licks simply by playing along with the intro here, because that's where they are all, for the most part, contained. basically the whole song, all right? You're playing the movable A-shaped chord, you're playing it open as a G, you're playing it at the fifth string, which is a C chord, you're playing it at the third string, which is a B-flat chord. Playing it twice as a G, once as a C, open G again, once as a B-flat, and then open G. And then mute it. You can play it with one finger. In the intro, it's two G's at the beginning, but there's other places in between licks where he plays one G before it. So it's either or simply listen to the original you'll see when he does which and it's not really important because this is loose this is fun right? so in the intro after he plays that twice then the drums come in and then on the fourth one he lets the G chord ring open and then he does this slide off from the C which is of course not quite as good sounding with just a finger as opposed to a slide, but it's something like... And then the next time he goes... Sliding that same shape a whole octave up to the 12th fret, which is of course a G chord again, a G major chord. Again, we're playing the three strings, four, three, two. So. And then he sort of the next time arpeggiates it a little bit. And just makes it ring like a bell. And then the last time he teases it with that and he does this a ton of times throughout the song. He's teasing it, sliding it up from one fret below, a half step below, which of course would be an F sharp major chord, major triad, up to the G major triad. So it's kind of like... There's a lot of this sort of tension.
play around with that. Okay, it's just fun again. And you'll see how using that movable A shape can get you all kinds of cool licks by sliding it around the fretboard. Okay, that one lick that I was telling you a few minutes ago that you need to tune down to get. The reason is you need an open D, and of course the sixth string is normally an open E. So we need to go down a whole step. Open, third, open, third. a little throw in he throws in there okay and if you don't want to tune down you can play it on the third and fourth string it's mimicking the chord progression right it's just a little fill so there's that and then there's the slide up to the 12th fret you can play around with that, doing some arpeggios, teasing it from the fret below. But the essential structure of the song is just... So play around with all these. Again, very loose. Sometimes you just need to rock. Sometimes you just want to rock. Get out your distortion pedal. Get out your rock and roll guitar. Play around with this. Play along to some George Thurgood records. And maybe it'll inspire you to take up a slide. Who knows? All right, thanks for joining me today. I will see you next time.